Hello my eco soulmates, my name is Daria and you're on my channel Eco Darius where we are discussing various environmental movies and for today I decided to address the waste management problem and we're gonna watch Trust. It's gonna be scary because you know all environmental movies are intimidating but it's gonna be fine and for now you know what you need to do make yourself a cup of tea or coffee and let's start trust is a 2012 environmental documentary film written and directed by british filmmaker candida brady it follows actor jeremy irons as he investigates the global scale of impact of humans' modern wasteful consumerism and pollution. The film is a call for urgent action to resolve the issue of existing landfills and drastically reduce our consumption towards sustainable levels and zero waste. It also demonstrates how this has already been achieved successfully in many communities around the world. The documentary looks at the risks to the food chain and the environment through a pollution of our air, land and sea by waste. The film reveals surprising truths about immediate and potent dangers to human health. It's still a big surprise for me that many governments around the world still deny a link between detrimental environmental conditions and human's health. So in the movie Jeremy Irons is having conversation with different politicians, scientists and ordinary people whose health have been fundamentally affected by uh, waste pollution. And waste pollution is a result of human's activities and we know that this problem is not resolved yet. Jeremy visits like 11 different locations around the globe. France, the United Kingdom, the United States, uh, what else? Indonesia, Vietnam, Iceland uh, also. And he witnesses how waste pollution is affecting our health, how it can be averted and what we can do to achieve zero waste future. Frankly speaking, it's been 10 years since the release of the movie Trust and drastically nothing changed. In the past, it would be much easier for us to bury uh, garbage into the ground because it was predominantly organic, so it would decompose very easy and very fast. But now, most of our items that we throw out is single-use, made of different types of polymers like polyethane, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, and these materials are not biodegradable. Movie asks a question, what we can do with this amount of waste? The first answer is landfills, and to watch it, we are moving to Lebanon, where there is a 40-meter mountain of uh, household waste that detrimentally affecting the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. The waste is not separated uh, into, you know, organic, hazardous, not hazardous waste. It's just dumped in one pile. When chemicals are decomposed under, you know, the high heat in Lebanon, uh, the crazy amount of methane is released into atmosphere. And we know that methane is one of the greenhouse gases that terribly enhancing global warming. And after 10 years, the problem is still here. And if 10 years ago the garbage was hidden from the public while dumping on outskirts of Lebanon, now it's everywhere on streets. And let's remember that garbage is generated daily. Okay, you can reply me, Daria, but this is Lebanon. 
nothing like this is happening in developed countries. And I can tell you, please wake up. According to the movie, the United Kingdom is a top country with the wasteland fields. Thus, in Yorkshire and Gloucestershire, next to the massive toxic waste mounds, they want to build a school and a hospital as well as housing. Local activists file complaints against the waste management companies. But waste management companies are so rich that they hire whole research institutions and think thanks to provide proof that landfills are not dangerous at all. Like you might heard about a clay line technique when the bottom of landfill is covered with a clay layer that all liquids, dangerous chemicals, will not penetrate the ground waters. So it occurred that this technique doesn't work. What next we can do with waste? Burn it, right? Mm, I hear you, you little waste management proponents. Waste incineration is more expensive than burying garbage in dumpyards, and it feels a better way to handle waste without damage to soils and water. However, in real life we see that people living next to waste to energy plants are more prone to have chronic health anomalies, and not only for humans. To prove it, Jeremy flies to Iceland where he meets uh, local farmers and they complain that after the incinerator started to walk, they began to notice various health issues of uh, their livestock and also the quality of milk decreased since there was a very suspicious sludge. The reason was dioxins. Please remember this term. A well-functioning waste-to-energy plant requires a very good uh, smoke treatment system, also known as filters, and they're super expensive, and even this town in Iceland couldn't afford it, so they decided to shut down this incinerator. So, about dioxins. When we burn waste, there is fly ash, super tiny particles that are extremely hard to detect and analyze. Their danger is that they are almost invisible, but can bioaccumulate in humans' body for up to six generations and lead to many diseases, including cancer. In France, in Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes, local uh, population started to notice that there is abnormally freaking amount of cancer cases among local inhabitants. Immediately they could connect all these cases to the Geely incinerator that uh, was eventually shut down after trials. What bothers me a lot as an environmental human rights defender is that states whose obligation actually to safeguard the public's health didn't provide any proof of the safety of this incinerator. Instead, they delegated to the shoulders of ordinary people who needed to prove its danger. I mean, who has resources, who has money, who has obligations? In international law practice, there are like four sources for international courts and tribunals that they can rely upon while uh, making final decisions. And among these four sources, there are uh, principles. They're called principles of international law. And one of those principles is the precautionary principle, which says that states must not delay the adoption of effective measures aimed at preventing the risks of serious and irreversible damage to the environment in the absence of scientific or technical certainty. It 
it's a government's responsibilities to protect public health and the environment and provide information about impact of incinerators on public health and uh, nature. It was very sad to know that all incineration operators over the world emit a higher level of dioxins than prescribed by laws. A huge amount of waste goes to water, like cigarette butts, plastic bags, fishing nets, any litter of all kinds. And in the movie there was a very shocking episode to me when the people made a list of various items that they found in the body of a grey whale. All fishermen around the world are also noticing that among fish stock there are so much garbage in fishing nets. And there was one fisherman in the movie, uh, I, I really liked his saying that the different materials became a face of epox, right? Like stone, copper, iron, coal, and all those materials are well to recycle or decompose. And now we live in the era of plastic, and this is our face. Like the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is a soup. Garbage soup contains millions of microplastic particles. So all those biodegradable plastics are referring only that those plastics can break down into million microplastics, but still very harmful to the environment. Like there was a scientist in the lab and he showed a container with the biodegradable plastic and he was saying like, oh, this plastic is degradating since 2004. We can't escape plastics problem and precisely single-use plastics. I can tell you as a polymer studies graduate that polymers, plastics, are incredible materials. But when we produce items that we're going to use multiple times, like, I don't know, planes, uh, construction frameworks, uh, furniture, um, I don't know, maybe some devices, and so and so, many applications. But when it's single-use item, <laughs> polymers, uh, plastic polymers, should not be used to produce it, uh, even if they are biodegradable. After we got so scared, what we can do to resolve this problem. The movie creators suggest using our containers and textile bags while buying groceries. In this case, grocery shops would offer special discounts for such customers. Thumbs up! Next, to sort garbage into organic and non-organic and to compost organic waste and utilize it in agriculture. Thus, we have improved farming and more people are involved in the waste sorting business. And not only farming can be improved. We can use methane out of organic waste decomposition to fuel our vehicles. Yes, I know that in some countries people are able to separate their waste uh, on the household level. But you know, like not everyone is genius. So let's uh, employ other personnel to do it instead of you. Like for example, in Slovenia, you can dump sorted waste into categories for free, or you can dump unsorted waste in one bag with little payment, because other people would do it instead of you. By the way, check the Slovenia case. I think that's a European front runner in terms of zero waste movements. Cities participating in zero waste have together managed to prevent 15,000 tons of mixed waste and consequently save 3 million euro in waste management costs. 
Does it sound appealing to you? To sum up, the movie Trust is about the adverse effects of dumping waste on landfills and waste incineration. What ordinary people can do from their end is to first minimize waste generation and to sort waste at home. And this is only a matter of a habit. Governments should improve a management control system over landfills and incinerators and improve advanced educational activities. It should be common in schools to teach kids to sort waste and minimize waste generation, like Scandinavian countries are doing. To my mind, uh, Trust is doing two good things. The first one, it shows appalling images of uh, a garbage talked river in Indonesia where people use water to drink or a hospital in Vietnam where people uh, look after kids with deformities uh, because of powerful dioxins, uh, the agent of orange that was sprayed by the US military. And they put this ugly truth in front of our noses. The second one, it gives us facts in easy digestible chunks. The world's present rate of garbage creation is not only unsustainable, it's life-threatening. The waste management issue is not someone else's issue, it's yours, it's mine. It's your siblings, it's your parents, it's your exes, it's your husband's wife's spouses, whatsoever. And if you're not convinced about this, please watch the movie Trust and you won't be left with any doubts afterwards. Um, because you will understand the waste problem is a serious problem and it affects all of us. That's it for me now. Thank you so much for watching my review and what do you think about the movie Trust? Let me know in the comment section. And don't forget about likes and subscription. They motivate me to work further. See you next week. Пока-пока!